Toho is a series with a lot of characters, though this isn't exactly surprising information when you look at the amount of games that exist, and know that each main one has a minimum of five new characters introduced. Toho characters come in all kinds, from different types of yokai to various gods, sometimes based just on the species, and sometimes on well-known figures and folklore. Basically, there's a lot of sources of inspiration available for Zun to choose from when making a new character. However, this also applies to the fans when making their own Toho characters. Despite them being Toho fan games, I rarely get the chance to talk about the shmups. These games more often than not create a whole new roster of original characters to fill out their boss lineups. Like I said, they tend to look at the same sources as the main series creator. There have been plenty of fan shmups over the years, from full games to well-known scripts. And every now and then, a character created in one of these passion projects ends up attaining a surprising level of popularity becomes a character almost as notable as an official one. This isn't limited to just characters from games. There's numerous reasons why an unofficial character starts turning heads. And that's why today, I wanted to look at a number of popular Toho fan characters that have popped up throughout the years. Apologies for the long intro. Now let's get into it. Starting with some characters who may or may not count as canon. Satsuki Rin, a name that exists within the code of EOSD. This is Toho's most known example of an unused character and the story around her is kinda neat. I went over Rin in another video I did on unused content in Toho, so consider checking that out. Anyways, here's the rough idea. Satsuki Rin exists in EOSD's code as a potential third player character that was scrapped. An EOSD circle cut featuring a character not in the final game was present at the release of EOSD, and it became the basis of Rin's design. The character for Rin stands for the mythological creature, Kidden, and the Kidden's healing abilities and other fantasy titles on top of a comment from Marissa in the extra stage, created the idea of Rin being a kitten as well as a nurse. As for the color palette, well, you got me there. The best I could find was an old image from Zun depicting an unnamed blonde shrine maiden from 2001. Bit of a stretch, but there's similarities. So yeah, a bunch of small things added up to form the character known as Satsuki Rin. And over the years, popular interpretations of a potential personality formed. If the origin of the colors isn't accurate, then I have no idea when they came to be. As the circle cut girl certainly never got colored. Maybe it's just an instance of a well-known artist interpretation becoming the norm, but again, I have no idea. Rin isn't the only character in the series to essentially exist as only a name, and the next few characters will be of a similar circumstance. However, for them, they're named in canon and not just code. Hijiri Byakuden has a younger brother. His name is Myoren. Myoren has long since passed away, and it was his passing that sparked the chain of events that ultimately led to Byakuden's ceiling. If you want the full story on that, I highly recommend reading Byakuden's Omake. Myoden is based on a monk of the same name who appears in multiple stories. One of the most well-known stories is Shigisan Engi Imaki. In the third volume of this story, an unnamed Buddhist priestess worries about her younger brother, Myoden, never returning home, and sets out to reunite with him. This story also serves as the basis of Byakuden herself. Apparently, Zun has said that his mental image of Myoden is that of an old man and also stated in an interview that Myoren was originally planned to be the final boss in Undefined Fantastic Object, but decided against it because it would be weird to have an old man as the last boss in Toho. However, I cannot find any source to these claims, so take them as you will. Myoren has very little in the way of fan art, but from what I could find, they tend to depict him as a younger man who shares his sister's rather eccentric two-toned hair color. Despite how much of an impact Myoren had on his sister's life, he's not mentioned by her ever or by anyone really. He only really exists within Toho as the namesake of Byakuden's temple. He's definitely the least popular of these canon only in name characters, but I'm sure he has his fans regardless. Now let's move on to a character who, unfortunately, shares the same fate as our dearly departed monk. The Poltergeist Ensemble, the Prism River Sisters. PCB's stage four boss, and unique in that it's a trio boss. But what if I told you there's actually another Prism River missing from the picture here? The trio's Amake tells a story of a nobleman who had four daughters, but due to an accident, the sisters were orphaned, and ended up parting ways. However, one of those girls refused to leave the mansion she held so dear, and that girl was the youngest daughter, Layla Prism River. Using some unspecified power, she created poltergeists who looked like her sisters, and at some point, the mansion slipped into Gensokyo, where it still remains today. Not much is known about Layla, only the mention of her family tragedy for creating the prison rivers we currently know, and the sad reminder that those four sisters have long since departed from this world. Due to her relation to the prison rivers, it's believed that she also played an instrument, 
or was a singer. In terms of fan design, she has wavy green hair at varying length, usually long, and an outfit in similar design to the other Prism Rivers, colored purple. Layla has made a number of smaller cameos in various Toa fan games, but none of the ones I know do much with the character outside of a small visual appearance. A bit of a shame, but for some characters, even a small appearance is a big deal. Much like Myoden, no one talks about Layla at all, but it's indisputable that she was here. I like to believe that she lived a fulfilling life with her summoned sister stand-ins because her life is much too sad otherwise. Some people believe she still resides in that mansion as a poltergeist herself. Unfortunately, as far as canon seems to be concerned, the tragedy of the Prison River family is the only story of Layla will ever know. That was two characters who have long since passed, but I got another one here who's only half passed, if you know what I mean. Kompaku Yomu is the current gardener of Hakugokuro, in service of Sai Yoji Yuiko, but I'm not here to talk about Yomu. I'm here for her predecessor. Kompaku Yoki was the first gardener of Hakugokuro, in service for about 300 years. However, one day, after naming a younger Yomu his successor, he left for parts unknown. Yoki is presumably still alive, but his whereabouts remain completely unknown. Yomu and Yuiko have comments about him, but they're rather short. Yoki was the only human to know the full story of the Saigyo Ayakashi, and disappeared believing Yomu could inherit the truth of Yuiko. I say was, because Akyu made this information public in perfect memento and strict sense a few years later. Yoki has yet to appear in canon, but the widely regarded fan design has him with long swept back white hair and a short beard, wearing a green and white hakama and coat, colors and designs similar to Yomu. So we're a bit into the video now, and I've yet to talk about a single fully fan character. Whoops. Well, don't worry, I only have one more character like the above before I get there. But this one is a bit unique in that they should exist, but nothing in canon has ever really gone into it. Hakure Reimu is the current Hakure Shrine Maiden, a role that is extremely important to Gensokyo's existence. However, it's also a role that very little is known about. There are a ton of questions about it that any lore enthusiast would be interested in having answered, but the main one I want to look at is this. How does one become a Hakure Shrine Maiden? A fair assumption is the role of Hakure Shrine Maiden is hereditary. Simply being born as a Hakure is enough. However, there's an interesting comment made by Shamemaru Aya in Silent Center in Blue, where she remarks about needing to find a new Shrine Maiden in case Reimu's trip to the moon goes south. A smaller, and much sillier bit occurred in Wild and Horned Hermit, where Reimu almost died by eating some expired food. Aya's comment leaves much open for discussion, and the silliness of Wild and Horned Hermit aside, it's the same idea. What exactly is the plan if Reimu kicks the bucket? That raises another question. Who exactly was the Shrine Maiden that came before Reimu? Gensokyo is over a century old, so there's no way it's only been Reimu the whole time. And I feel the answer to this question would shine a lot of light on the role in general. Sorry for the lore dump, but if you haven't guessed at this point, the next character I want to talk about is a fan's interpretation of this potential character that got real popular. Known only by her title, the previous generation Hakure Miko, often shorted to Sendai. This character was originally made for Mugen. As you'd expect from a character made for fighting games, her outfit is designed with close quarter combat in mind, though it still shares some similarities with Reimu's. Sendai comes from an era before the spell card rules existed, having to rely on brute force to deal with problematic yokai. This goes well with her outfit's design, and her physique reflects this in most fan art, with a muscular figure, or even battle wounds. The creator of Sendai never specified her relationship to Reimu herself, though I think most people would assume her to be Reimu's mother. This is most likely due to Osana Reimu, a fan comic depicting a young Reimu with her mother and an older Rumia. Reimu's mother shares many similarities to that of the Sendai I just talked about. Well, it's mostly that her battle outfit is the same. But even so, it's hard to think of these characters as two completely different people. Well, that's about everything I got for her. Yeah, the lead-up was longer. Whoops. Anyways, we're finally going to move into actual 100% fan-made characters. Now let's start with someone who's supposedly related to everyone's favorite, Yapping Kappa. Sometime in or after 2008, a number of people from Two Channel's Red Cucumber thread worked together to create a Danmaku script of an unofficial phantasm stage for subterranean animism. This script is known as Subterranean Hatred, and the boss of the stage is the half-human, half-kappa, Kawashiro Mitori. If you're familiar with the characters from SA, then you can probably guess that Mitori's story is not a happy one. She was alienated by humans, and the Kappa avoided her since they did not want to be seen by humans. Mitori didn't understand why she was being treated the way she was, and ultimately decided she shouldn't exist in the human world anymore, so she left for hell. 
with a closed heart and a hatred to those who treated her so poorly. Mitori's ability is to prohibit everything and anything. This applies both physically and mentally. Her trauma is strong, and it makes her hard and even dangerous to approach. Her design reflects this ability well, with the big no-entry sign she wears on her back and the lock on her chest, which supposedly can be unlocked by the key that Nitori wears on hers. Mitori is arguably the most popular fan character to date, though as a fan character, it's still pretty rare for them to make cameos in different projects. There's enough detail to the character to make her feel official, even a fan-made entry in the Gensokyo Chronicle exists. I think it really speaks to the care and detail that went into making Mitori's character that she can be related to a character from canon, but not have it feel weird or forced. She's the kind of fan character that I'm not really opposed to existing, and would understand anyone who felt the same, but stronger. Next, we have one of the earliest instances of a Toho fan character. On April 18th, 2004, the Doujin Circle, Haniwa's store, released the Doujin Thoughts of Dolls. The story starts with Marissa coming across a talking doll while out in the forest. I'll spare you the rest of the synopsis and just say that at the end of the story, Alice is left with the doll, and it decides to stay with her. Alice then names the doll Maybell. Thoughts of Dolls is a trilogy, and the only source of info on Maybell's character. So here's a general idea of her. Maybell is a fully autonomous doll. She's dressed as a Victorian era doll, with her outfit being red, and she has green hair with two long curls. She's quite childish, energetic, and stubborn. Also fairly noisy. She has the ability to hear and speak to objects, though it's more so something she feels. And she really doesn't like when someone looks at her like she's full of it when explaining that. Combat-wise, she can't do much of anything without an outside source of magic, though she has some sort of special ability that can amplify the ability in nearby items. According to the artist, the idea of Maybell was inspired by a bit in Marissa's PCB Omake, where it mentions that magic items gathered in one place tend to interfere with each other in various ways. There's a bit more to it than just that, but you can definitely see the influence in Maybell's ability. As you can tell from the release date of the original Dojin, Maybell predates a lot of characters. Apparently there was a rumor that Hina's design was inspired by Maybell, probably due to their similar color scheme and them both being based on dolls. Normally, it's hard to say if Zun is familiar with a fan character, but as both Zun himself and Maybell are playable in Toho Unreal Mahjong, it's pretty clear he's aware. Now we're dipping into the smaller scale, but still pretty well known, characters. And the structure of this video is going to change a bit. Now let's begin with the character known as Karen Yawada. Karen was created for a Pixip contest with the theme of designing a boss character for the upcoming Toho game, Undefined Fantastic Object. There's not much lore to this character outside of her name and design. I rather like that design as it incorporates elements of Buddhism and a big ol' UFO behind her. Now knowing UFO, these elements together isn't that surprising but I have no idea when this character was created, as the original image has since been deleted. All I know for sure is that the contest took place before UFO's full release, so it could have been before anyone really knew how much UFO had to do with Buddhism at all. Last thing to mention about Karen is that she also has her own fan-made theme, something that is certainly expected for a character like Mitori, since she's in a game. But for a character like Karen, who only really exists as a concept, well, it just goes to show how weirdly popular some things can get. Next, we have Sugar Satellite, a character created in a video on Nico Nico about a new character debuting in Great Fairy Wars. Sugar is the fourth fairy of light, and she was born from a line in Sengetsusei, where Sunny Milk tells Alice that she heard about her grimoire from the fourth yokai of light. Since Sunny was lying about being a yokai to begin with, Sugar was born a fairy instead. So when I say born from, I mean this is both the inspiration behind Sugar and the actual in-universe explanation for her creation. Sugar's namesake comes from natural satellites. Her color scheme is purple, and her ability is to manipulate one's perception. What does this mean? Well, I don't fully understand it either, but I guess it's something like being able to make one feel something is wrong, or watching them, or something. The original creator of Sugar has done art up of her in both Sun's style and Hirasaka Makoto's style. Hirasaka Makoto being the main artist behind Sengetsusei, and Great Fairy Wars. There's also a mock jacket with her based on the Great Fairy Wars one, and the events of Great Fairy Wars are what led Sugar to meeting the other fairies of light. Unfortunately, like Karen, the original video and images have since been deleted. It's almost kind of funny that a character who can make you feel like something has always been there is seemingly trying to appear as if they were never there at all. Next, we have Sashiro Mia Sasha, another character created in a video on Nico Nico attempting to make a new character for Toho Hiso Tensoku. Sasha is a Dai Darabochi, a giant yokai that Chirno believes she saw in her story. 
and according to Sasha's creator, she was a concept for a final boss for the game. But despite that, she ended up ignored by everyone in the game. Despite the Dai Darabachi being described as a giant being, Sasha herself is quite small. The explanation given is that she projects shadows and moonlight to make her appear massive. Unlike the previous two What If characters, Sasha actually did end up as a character in the Toa fan game, White Name Spoiled Past, as the stage 2 mid boss. The game's profile on Sasha is where most of the lore I mentioned here actually comes from. There's no official Toho version of a Dai Darabochi, but I rather like the ideas behind Sasha, and wouldn't mind if she ended up as the basis for whenever Zun decides to make one proper. Next up is Gatensoku Sen, another fan character made a boss character for Hiso Tensoku. The original image was posted on Pixiv and mimics Alfie's style of art, and in the same image is a mock-up sprite of her in Hiso Tensoku style. Sen is based on Gaku Tensoku, the first robot ever built in Japan. The objects she's holding match those of Gaku Tensoku. According to the original image, Sen's title is The Doll Learning from Natural Laws, and lists her ability as transcribing flashes of inspiration. I'm not really sure what that means, but it fits her when you know that the objects she holds are known as the signal arrow-shaped pen and the lamp of inspiration. Sen was also given a new weather type called Koden, which based on the description, would increase the hitbox size of projectiles. Now doesn't that just sound wonderful? Given her name, title, and inspiration, I think it's safe to assume she was an original idea for what Hiso Tensoku, uh, the robot doll, not the game itself, could have been. Unfortunately, yes, the original has since been deleted off Pixiv again, and that is a massive shame, as I actually really liked the idea of this character, and wanted to know more about what she was actually capable of. Now some rather miscellaneous weirdos, starting with this. What is this? This is every Toho character prior to Wily Beast and Weakest Creature's face averaged into one image. You put so many characters together, and what do you get? A fairly normal looking girl. Funny how that works out, huh? Next is Apple Girlington. So some years back, Toby Fox released a song titled Improvised Toho Music with Annoying Commentary, a tongue-in-cheek response to claims that his music sounds like Toho. The song covers a title theme and stage one themes. When he gets to the boss, he proclaims the song's title an Apple Disaster, and the boss name being Apple Girlington, the personification of an apple. Given Toby's fame, it's not that surprising that Apple Girlington picked up some steam. She even appeared in the Toho fan game, Wonderful Waking World, in 2022 as, you guessed it, the first stage boss. The game even takes the mock dialogue from the song into account for her pre-battle dialogue. As far as I know, there's no lore to this character at all. Outside, of course, that she's an apple, but it's quite the origin story. Personally, I like to think of her as having a relation to Johnny Appleseed, a true American inspiration, instead of just a bratty imitation. Next is Sasaki Rinboku-san. This character was created on Tube Channel for a Toho fan game called Toho Kandagawa. Well, this game doesn't exist. I'm not even sure if it was ever intended to be done, or if it was just a big joke. Either way, Rinboku-san got attention as a mascot for it of sorts. Most people probably know her from Toho Mother, as she shows up in that game as a boss. This is how I found out about her, and is honestly the only reason I'm including her here, since there's basically nothing to the character at all outside of this cameo and her appearance. Next is Mart, or maybe you know her as Manager Murasa. This character comes from a Don Maku script called Combinations with You, which consists of a single boss fight against a Sukumogami of a Family Mart uniform. Family Mart is a Japanese convenience store chain, and the spell cards are jokes related to convenience stores and parodies of other characters. If you're wondering why she's known as Manager Murasa, it's because the Sakumogami kinda looks like her. Though I can't read Japanese, so maybe it really is Murasa. I don't know for sure. Next is a weird one, who's really towing the line of Toho fan character. The Dark Elf Paladin, Barant. Barant, in relation to Toho, comes from a series called The Iron of Ying and Yang, a 46 episode playthrough of a JRPG made in RPG Maker, centered around the Paladin's adventures through Gensokyo. From what I could find, Barant is a real person who became a bit of a celebrity on 2Channel. He was known for his high enthusiasm for the Paladin class and the Gluttony Sword, and a dislike for ninjas. But what really made him famous was his use of wacky grammar that jokingly became referred to as Barant language. This weird style of writing is known as Barantisms, and Baron's dialogue, as well as the menu's descriptions, status effects, and commands, in Iron of Yin and Yang is full of it. Now a mix of good and bad news. Iron of Yin and Yang is finished, but it's entirely in Japanese. 
and there seems to be no plan to release the game itself, making translating it a bit awkward. On top of that, Barant's style of speech is very unique, so translating it into another language in a way that preserves the same feel seems near impossible. The series is being converted into a comic, titled, I turned Iron of Yin and Yang into a comic because I felt like it, which is being translated by fans, though the series doesn't seem to be anywhere close to finished, and not all of the game's content will be getting adapted. So like I said, this one is really towing the line, and if you don't consider Baron to be a proper Toa fan character, that's fine. For me though, I think he's pretty neat, and I've been looking for a good excuse to look more into who he is. And I gotta say, he's a lot sillier than I expected, and it makes me wish I could understand and enjoy Iron of Yin and Yang. Now let's wrap this up with one last character, who despite a rough start, found a place in at least one person's heart. The blue magician, Yuto Ichika. Yuto is a Toa OC originally created by a young Toa fan. People uh, didn't take well to her, calling her a bootleg patchouli. She came to be better known by her nickname, Blue Chuli. Despite all the negativity towards poor Yuto, there was at least one person who really liked her, and that was Chair G Tables. Chair is the lead developer of the group Lame Dimension, and ended up making games involving Yuto while working with Yuto's original creator to establish her lore. To keep it brief, Yuto is a young magician looking for her missing mother. Yuto specializes in telekinesis, and it serves as the basis to all of her spells. Her primary attack seems to be hurling giant rocks at people. She seems to be aware of her status as a bootleg too, and some games tend to play a bit into that. But trust me, long gone are the days of Yuto bullying. Chair's passion for Yuto is genuinely inspiring, and it really shows in the story of her Rivals of Aether creation. Rivals of Aether is a platform fighter with workshop support for making new characters. As you can imagine, there's a lot of them of varying quality. Genesis, one of the largest Smash tournament series in existence, had announced the Rivals of Aether bracket specifically for characters from the Steam Workshop, picking some of the best the Workshop had to offer for a competitive environment. Chair, having heard about this, wanted to make Yuto as a character who would pass the check. And to do so, Chair dropped the fighting games they had been playing to focus on Rivals, to fully learn how the game works, and what makes for a good and balanced character for it. The result? Yuto Ichika appeared in top 8 at Genesis 9's Rivals Workshop bracket against legendary streamer Jerma985. Truly a match made in heaven. Now it's possible she appeared in previous Genesis brackets, but this is the main one that I'm aware of. And really, the point of this is to show that Chair's dedication to Yuto paid off. That was a lot more than I was expecting, but I really wanted to include it since I thought it was all really nice, even if the actual bits on Yuto herself took a back seat. Yuto herself has definitely become a more beloved character over the years, and there's virtually no trace of negativity that centered around her existence back then. I guess the moral of the story is don't be afraid to create your own characters for a series you love, because there's always a chance someone will come to love them as much as you do. And that concludes my look into some Toho fan characters that I thought were interesting. And boy when I say some, I mean the very tiny percentage of the most well-known ones. Now you may have noticed, but despite the intro mentioning fan shmups, pretty much none of the characters here actually debuted in such a fan game. Well, the reason for that was mostly because I grossly underestimated the amount of Toho fan shmups in existence, so I really had to be picky, and opted for, like I said, the most popular ones. There are two special shoutouts I'd like to give though, those being Torisumi Hodo from Hollow Song of Birds, and Ha Siori from Toho Healing Nature. These two are quite popular themselves, and even have their own dedicated fan art days, those being August 6th and August 8th respectively. Quite a feat for fan characters. By the way, while I was making this video, I was made aware of a wiki listing what could potentially be every Toho fan character in existence. Though it's not in English, so I'm definitely not going through it. But man the absolute volume of entries on this page goes to show how little I dived into this topic. I hope you enjoyed my look through the ones I did cover, and maybe the info will help you out someday. As for me, I've definitely become more interested in fan characters, and I'm looking forward to playing some more of these fan shmups. I doubt any fan character I run into is going to become a new favorite of mine, but like I said with Yuto, you never know who will come to love the original characters as much as their creators do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you during the next incident.